and three, two, one, boom. And we're back with another episode of Socratic Gamers. This is a movie review. We checked out... Um, did you forget the name? Yeah, I did forget the name. <laughs> Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I almost said Mexico. Yeah. Because that's, that's like the name. Did he make that movie? Once Upon a Time in Mexico? Oh, no. Was, I don't think it was him. But he was in that movie, though. He was in... He played like a cameo in it. I, uh, I think so. Yeah. Maybe he did direct that movie. Maybe. I don't know. Somebody will figure it out. But yeah, we checked out that movie. And um, as per usual, when they're good, or even if they're not good, but if they're acclaimed, we uh, will review it. Mm. So just like all the other ones, we're going to... Uh... Actually, you know what? Before we get into it, I, I realized something really interesting, and I just want to like put it out there. Yeah. Because I finished the Mike Tyson book. Okay. So everyone who's got like this this like amazing like like people who make it to like an amazing level of aptitude they often have like some hole they're trying to fill mm-hmm. so like mike tyson even though everyone's like oh he was like a destroyer he's like a god amongst men you know he was actually super insecure like in his book you're just like oh you were like a scared little boy and custom auto his trainer and uh manager yeah he like he like was the only one to love him and then he didn't want to do wrong by him because it's like this is the one guy that gave oh, me a break right you know what i mean yeah it's interesting and that's what gave him the fire to like do his best i see he was the first person to ever say like oh you could be something great to mike when mike was really just like chicken and like a lot of things mm-hmm. yeah fascinating anyway speaking of greatness uh quentin tarantino legend uh so we're gonna score it we're gonna talk about it and we're gonna rescore it to see if we swayed each other's opinion. Okay. As per usual. So, what are you gonna give it? Uh, an eight. Wow. I think it's pretty high. Yeah, oh, it's it pretty high? high for you. Oh, is it? Okay. Uh, I'm gonna give it a uh, seventy-five out of ten. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> you think that's high? Um, I'm gonna give it a seven. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a seven. Okay. All right, so why why did it possibly score an eight in your mind? What would you, uh, you like about it? Let's go with that first, as we always. Um, I don't know. It, it, I really liked it. It just... Uh, I didn't feel any... Like, it was long. I, that was one of my gripes. But I did not feel... I don't know, because maybe because I like that kind of stuff. Like, okay, true. That, like, really go in-depth into the character's life, in a sense that like you're trying to he's trying to show as much as possible about the guy yeah yeah totally right i agree i agree i think I agree. like those sort of things, like i was like no, no, like when i was watching it like especially because it's all full spoilers right so like just like in the driving scene right uh when brad pitt's going back to his house mm-hmm. like that whole long shot of him driving oh what's he like as a person yeah yeah you saw his two styles of driving when he was driving with his friend and then how he drives by himself. True. That was the shift. To, oh, this guy is a stunt guy. That's what that guy does. Interesting. I didn't even catch that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's, that's a, these are the things he shows. Like, that's what I liked. And like that made me like more. Like, like I like those long shots and how he's like that. Like, I don't know. It just, I didn't find it boring. I didn't find it anything like that. I found it quite interesting. I, I felt like in these kinds of movies... He makes you invest heavily into the characters, and I. See, that's the thing. I. This is what I like about shows that do uh-huh. that. Uh-huh. And he did that as in a movie that's only like whatever two hours long. Sure, but I didn't it, think about that. No, it was like long. It was like three hours. Oh yeah, long, three hours yeah. long. Sorry, yeah, almost yeah. So like to, and, and because there's a limited amount of limited cast in a sense, it's only basically two people. Right. And you focus mainly on them the whole movie, so you get to understand uh, their ups and downs in a bit. True. Yeah, hey, Margot Robbie, that was like a total bait and switch. Like they, <laughs> yeah. they had her like throughout the entire interviews, and like they have her on the poster, and she's not even really like a she's a main character, but she's not like a like a main character. She's yeah, no. They they no. it was very like. It was almost a bait. The reason why I call it a bait and switch is because they made you believe that something was going to happen to her, and then nothing happened to her. Right. It was all about Brad Pitt and Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio's characters. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, that's so funny because like when I first watched it, remember I was like, ah, oh, I don't like this movie. Mm-hmm. You know, because it was like so long and like it felt, it just felt like a lot. Like a lot happened. Right. It didn't feel long, but it felt like a lot happened. 
you know? Okay. And, like, but the next day I, I found myself, like, not, I couldn't stop thinking about the characters. And mm. I was like, oh, that is your skill, Quentin Tarantino. Like, you embedded these people into my mind because you made me think that they're, like, real people. Like, yeah. I lived right. their life. Like, for, that's the thing I like about movies. Like, when you watch a, a really good movie, you forget about your own life and you heavily invest in this other person's life. So it kind of, it's kind of like you're, like, living an alternate life. Mm-hmm. You know, like a different reality. Yeah. Like, what would it be like if I was that guy? And like, really good movie directors and like, you know, people who write write movies and stuff, mm-hmm. they they're able to make you feel that. And I feel like Quentin Tarantino is like a master at doing that. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah like for all yeah. of his movies, he really pulls you in. But it can be pretty dragging. Like, you gotta be. It's like a, it's a Quentin Tarantino movie. You know. Yeah. You're like, I'm about to get into this. <laughs> but yeah. I really liked the juxtaposition between the two characters. Like, one guy was so heavily, like, self-obsessed. Yeah. And then, like, which is Leo's character. Yeah. And then you have, like, Brad Pitt's character, who's more about, like, living life. He's more experiential. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whereas, like, Leo's character is more cerebral. You know? Mm -hmm. He would, like, overthink things, you know? Whereas, like... Like when uh, Leo's character was letting Brad Pitt go, and Brad Pitt's character was like, "All right, right, yeah, like yeah, he was yeah. sad, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it was more like, okay." And then like they said, um, Brad Pitt's character, like he was like over narration, and they're like, he didn't know what he was going to do next, mm-hmm. but it didn't really matter. And I was like, "Yeah, that's that's a very like experiential character." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's like he's ruled by his emotions, whereas right. like Leo, yeah, I don't know, um, Brad Brad Pitt's character whereas leo's is ruled by his head okay he, like his thoughts oh okay like he he follows leo follows more of his like his thoughts mm-hmm. you know his analytics and then like brad pitt's character will feel it out and do it oh i got i see what you mean okay yeah, yeah. That, that was a cool thing um i totally thought the bruce lee scene was not real okay i mean yeah was not real yeah, I was like, is that a... Uh, you thought it was a dream Yeah, I was kind of like, sequence? is it a dream se- Like, that was the one questionable moment for me. I think maybe he's doing that on purpose. Uh, so that people can, like, choose. Like, right. If they want to. Right, win. yeah. I wonder how much is also... Because I don't know a lot of the movies during that time. Like, what he's taking from what was filmed during that time. And using it... What do you mean? In his own films. Like, that kind of style. Like, like what, what tropes did he take from the 60s? Oh, okay, okay. Like, I, I wonder yeah, if yeah. some of those things are like that in there. I don't, I don't, I have to, I wanted to look more into it, but I didn't have time for that. But, uh, um, it, it basically, yeah, they, the whole movie is just their life until, like, just following what's happening in their yeah, life. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was a, <laughs> the movie was their life and then it had a climax. Yeah. And you're like, oh, okay. Right, right. It wasn't like it was building but you kept, subtly to it. It was subtly, but you. But that's what I liked about it. It was building subtly, but you're like, when is it going to happen? When is it going to happen? Mm-hmm. And then uh, it's like, oh, okay, this is something. What's going on here? Like when uh, he follows those hippie uh, girls, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, oh, what's going to happen to him there? Like, like you know, what I mean, like all that and was nothing building. Happened nothing happened there, yeah. exactly, and then all that build up. Uh, I thought it was satisfying at the end. I yeah, totally, totally. I thought it was sort of like. It's sort of like life itself where it's like very like blase. Like life is very like bland. Mm-hmm. But the ramifications of your decision are like unforeseen. Yeah. You know, like when it was like six months later and then he's like, <laughs> he's like, oh, I know you. But it was like, dude, that was six months ago. Right. You know, like you would never, you, it, you know, like other movies, it's like it's like very evident what's about to happen next. Yeah. Or like it's like this led to this, mm-hmm. you know, but this one was more like, oh, this accidental, not accidentally, but it's like indirectly led to this. Right. You know? Yeah. Like there's like a driving story in all these other movies, but then there was no like, there was no like, oh, he's going to get him back because he killed his wife. This was more mm-hmm. like happenstance. It's like, oh, right time, right place. Mm-hmm. You know, and it was almost like, oh, how small is Hollywood? Because like these hippies, you ran into them again. You kept running into them like the yeah. girl. Yeah. And then like even the final scene, it's like you guys ran into each other again. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. 
maybe that's what he's going for is like to show how small world Hollywood is. Because I, I heard that like from interviews I've seen that they're like, this is more of a an homage to um, to Hollywood in that time. Right. Like it was like a love letter to Hollywood. It wasn't like a, it was more about like depicting it, mm-hmm. depicting the time versus like actually cracking off with the story. Yeah, you know, it was. Which it makes was, sense, you know? I, I did see some where he said, uh, like, he tried to remember whatever he could from when he was a kid about... Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, one of my favorite um, scenes in the movie or, like, interactions was Brad Pitt and his dog. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, tell me why I was so scared at the end when, like, the guy was pointing the gun at Brad Pitt and then Brad Pitt was, like, high on acid. And yeah. He pointed it, He pointed his, like, fingers in a gun formation Oh, at him. my God. I was like, please don't <laughs> shoot off his hand. <laughs> like, because, like, you don't hold that against freaking Quentin Tarantino. He might do something yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, right? that's right, that's But, right. like, usually Quentin Tarantino doesn't, like, mess with his heroes, you know? He likes it when the heroes are, like, heroes, mm-hmm. you know? And I, I love how, like, Quentin Tarantino, he always does... Um, like those over overkills for people he hates. <laughs> yeah. Like he like in um Inglorious Bastards, he hated the Nazis, right? Right. So it's like he overkilled them. Yeah, yeah. In yeah. this one he brought back the Nazis again, overkilled them. And then yeah, the Charles uh, Manson uh, people <laughs> overkilled them. I is there's something satisfying about it because it's like, yeah, we all wish we could do that to like the right. bad people. Yeah, you exactly. Know? I mean, that's why uh, I mean this is yeah uh, an alternate history, right? That yeah, is, yeah is exactly. Something. So it was uh uh, like it makes me want. I like. I don't know much about it, so I do want to learn more. Of what exactly happened? Mm, yeah. In in that time period, and you, you know what I was wondering about? Like, how much did he pay Brad Pitt? Because why is Brad Pitt in a trailer? But there were such like there were such like contrasting characters. Like the uh-huh. dude's got like a mansion, and then Brad Pitt's got like a trailer. Right. And then, but then they're like the best of friends, right? He's like, oh, do you want to watch my? Like, he, they're really, like, good friends, right? Like, yeah, remember, yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah. hey, do you want to come in and watch my, like, FBI thing? And he's like, I just, oh, I, of course, uh, I thought we were just going to. Uh, and I was like, oh, that's so cute. Like, right, right. You know, like, obviously, the chauffeur is like, like, dude, you just chauffeured for him all day, but you actually genuinely care about this guy, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, I mean, like, I don't think even Leo's character knows his, uh, like, predict- depth of care. Oh, and his, but his, like, uh, um lifestyle like kind of pretty, pretty yeah, he pro- yeah he probably doesn't know that he lives in a trailer yeah yeah and i don't think like the, it seems like the like brad pitt's character would not tell him that kind of yeah thing. yeah so, so, uh, that like, that's is, something yeah. you don't need to worry about right like that's so fascinating you're right though it's like that is what quentin tarantino did he like he made he fleshed out these characters lives yeah like they seem like mundane characters yeah with normal lives it was like i was watching somebody's life i think that's why it felt so long because i was like right i'm just watching Somebody live. Like, it had nothing to do with, like, advancing the storyline. Well, it did, but it was, like, so subtle mm-hmm. that it was, like, not... It wasn't those movies where it, like, drives you forward. Right. You know, like, if we watch, like, Fast and Furious, like, oh, yeah, and then he's going to fight that guy. And, okay, now he's also got to find the treasure. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But, like, this one was more like, I'm watching you go eat ramen. Yeah. You know? Right, like, right, right. Or in this case, it was craft Dinner, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, that interaction with him and his dog was so, like normal yeah you know and you're just like wow you really built this character well i mean that that, yeah that's why i guess i left uh satisfied yeah and that is what they said like um brad pitt and um leonardo um he's like quentin tarantino really like is super meticulous about everything like when they were doing the scene and they were Mm -hmm. like like in the when they were walking around like old hollywood and then, like, they'd go to a comic book stand. There'd be, like, old comics. Yeah. Like, everything had to be, like, from the time period. Yeah. So if you went that far with the set, you probably went that far with the backstory. Like, you told these guys, like, this is what your character's going through. Mm. And these are all these things to make it more, like, the acting to be, yeah. like, you know, fully understood through the actor. You're right. You're right. You know? Because you felt like these were people, you know? Yeah. I, I think that's why I, that's what I liked about it. What do you think of um, Leo's? I, I personally think that like Leo and Brad, they always act like the same characters. Like, um, I've seen those before. Yeah, but it's like they build those films knowing what they're good at, and I uh, guess true. And it like, works for the film, right? Like the accent that Leo used was like from 
a previous Quentin Tarantino movie. Same with um, right. Brad Pitt's character. Okay. Like these, these like styles of acting are mm-hmm. always the same. Uh, yeah, but I, but I, again, I like that style of Leo's acting. I always look forward to that. <laughs> the outbursts. The outbursts. I didn't think you know they're like this is the best outburst. Like I saw that in an interview. No, it's like I don't the think the best so. outburst scene. I was like, eh, I don't think it's, it's good, but it, it was good. like the best ever. No, I don't think so. No, I could see how this movie would like win awards though. You know, uh, yeah, it's so like unique. Like Quentin Tarantino movies are so unique. I mean, also it's fre- refreshing, you know, to get something that's also like. Uh, different different yeah than... true this was his 10th movie eh? 10th movie really yeah okay. i think he's he doing more no or was his ninth and he's gonna do one more he i think he's got like one more and he's done oh okay yeah, which might be like the rumor that i saw was like kill bill volume oh. four volume, volume three okay yeah make it a trilogy because she's like they're old now mm-hmm. so it's like enough time has passed Oh, true. For you to be like, yeah. to for me to like fill in a storyline about like you having a child now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, it's interesting. Like, yeah, it could be kind of cool, but we'll see what it is. I loved Kill Bill, so that was probably one of my favorite movies of all time. Right. Kill Bill. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, I like the general. I do like Quentin Tarantino. I don't know why I haven't seen it yet, but I do want to see the Hateful Eight. Yeah. Oh man, I just like I was saying before, I was like, it's. The fir- it's built into two maybe, parts. Yeah, maybe that was would have been like one of his only like worst ones, I guess. But it wasn't but, bad. It's not okay. It's just if you watch the first part alone, it, like it's sort of like you watch the first one, the first part, and you're like, oh man, this sucks, I'm going to turn it off. <laughs> but if you turn it off... You're missing out. On it's a bad movie. Right. Okay. But if you keep going, it's like, oh, this is a really good movie. But it's like mm-hmm. it, the first part's so bad. Not so bad. It's just so dry. Okay. That you just don't want to keep watching, but when you do watch it, you're like, oh, wow, the first part made complete and total sense, Mm -hmm. you know? Like, everything was dry because it was just setting up for the second half. Oh, I see. see. It's sort of like a domino effect, you know? Like, he was setting up all the pieces in the first scene, in the first thing. Mm -hmm. Like, things you would not have even guessed. Like, he'll place his cup there, and then you're like okay, why would you overly focus on the cup? Like, that's so random, but right. I guess it's, like, your style. And then the second half, like, he uses the cup to, like, kill a guy. Oh, I see. It's, you know what I mean? It's, like, yeah. it's all dominoed. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. They, they were saying in, like, this uh, music thing I was listening to uh, that you should, like, always strive to have your own style. You know, like, because if you mimic other people's, then it's, like, you're easily replaceable. Yeah. You know, if you're just, like, a copy artist. Like... Right. Yeah. Like, I, I try and do that even with my own work. Like, somebody was saying before, like, oh, you make, like, little highlight trailers, right? And But it, that's just what I got good at. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I feel like if you're going to hire me, you're going to hire me to do a highlight trailer. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, like, that's sort of like Quentin Tarantino, too. It's like, you're not going to hire him to make... It, it's sort of like... Guy, that's why I felt so bad about... Uh, Aladdin. <laughs> it was like it wasn't an it was not a Guy Ritchie film, right? You know, like Guy Ritchie is so iconic, just like Quentin Tarantino. Mm-hmm. But then when you watch that film, you're like, oh, there's no Guy Ritchie in here. You could have hired anyone to do this, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm glad Quentin Tarantino hasn't sold out like that. Not saying that Guy Ritchie sold out, but like. I right, didn't, done. I didn't like it last. Right, didn't. I see what you mean. Yeah. You know? uh, I mean, like King Arthur was still a Guy Ritchie film. Like you were like, yeah, oh, yeah. it's a Guy Ritchie film because mm-hmm. it was like, it was very like, dark and like gangster. Right. You know, and it had those quick cuts. I think if he had his way, like Aladdin would fit in his story. But it's a Disney film, right? It's I like, know, I know, I know. Yeah, because he had to follow what they wanted. They're pretty strict with their. <laughs> Uh, properties. Yeah, exa- exactly. But I think that would have been a really cool. Well, yeah, because I guess they're just really like with Disney, they're trying to remake the movies exactly how they were. You know, like Lion King, there was no like new take on it. It's not a reimagining, it's like a revamping. Yeah. You know, and right. I guess that's what like Guy Ritchie got caught in. Mm-hmm. Like he thought it would be like a reimagining, but it's more like a revamping. So it was like you could have just hired anyone. Right. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, that happens. But, you know, I, I mean, yeah. I mean, that's why it's refreshing to see Quentin Tarantino's. Like, it's just yeah, going to sure. be different. It's, you know. He he holds, like, that value where it's, like, 
it's a Quentin Tarantino summer. Like, we're, we're looking forward to it. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. like if, but he, he doesn't do it often enough that it's like, it gets stale. Mm-hmm. It's like, he doesn't, yeah, that's it's at thing. a rate yeah. that's like, oh, Quentin Tarantino movie. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, oh, it's going to be sick. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. He doesn't do it that often. Yeah. I mean, this is only his 10th film. Yeah. You know? But it feels like there was a lot, right? Like, but, cause, but they're long, though, right? The thing but is, they're long. They're long. Yeah. But I find them enjoy, uh, uh, full enjoyment. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Right. I, um, I still haven't seen his, his most iconic one, which is Pulp Fiction. Like, everyone talks about that one. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know the origin of um, Quentin Tarantino? He worked in a movie store. No, I don't know is his origin. So he worked in a video store where like people would rent things, and he was like, he'd watch movies all day, and then he was like, I could make a better one, <laughs> and then he made one, and oh, we were like, awesome. oh, this is sick. Right. But it didn't follow the rule, like the conventional yeah, yeah, rules. Yeah, yeah. So they were like, this is weird, but we like it. But that's what you need sometimes, right? You if someone keeps following the rules, nothing changes in the yeah, art, totally. in the art of it. True. Yeah, yeah. I'd say like. Um, Quentin Tarantino's movies are like art pieces. It's like yes. it's like a Warhol. Yeah. You know, like an Andy Warhol where it's like, it looks weird, mm-hmm. but you're like, but I should appreciate it. Mm-hmm. You know? You're right. Like, do you, I don't, like, make, correct me if I'm wrong, but like, I don't feel like I would watch a bunch of Quentin Tarantino movies again. Except for Kill Bill. Love them. Love that series. But like, I wouldn't be like, hey, it's th- actually, no, that's a lie because I put on Inglorious Bastards. <laughs> But, like, on the whole, like, the majority of the films are not like, oh, let me pop in a Quentin Tarantino movie. I think it's, like, after it's been some time, you may have forgotten the story or you want to go back to it. It's like that. Or you want that art piece. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe it's, like, the characters they built. But, like, when I did, like, I remember I remember when Inglourious did come out, I um, did watch that a few times. Yeah, yeah, no, no. That, that's what like, I was about to say. It's, like, maybe it's the, the characters he built out. Yeah. Because it's, like, I watched... Kill Bill so many times because I loved the characters. Right. You know? So, like, in Glorious Bastards, I also love the characters. Mm-hmm. So, but, like, in this one, I, I might watch this one again, actually, because I love the characters. Mm-hmm. Like, you just want to immerse yourself in that world. You don't want to, like, watch it, watch it, but you want it in the background. You know what I mean? When you're doing things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, like, one of those. But, like, I couldn't say that about, like, you know, Hateful Eight, Django. <laughs> can't, can't do that. It was right. just too intense. I see. I don't know, like. Do you, what do you feel about? Do you feel Django? The same way about Django? Oh, uh, I really enjoy that one. I know, but like, did you pop it on over and over, just like uh, in Glorious? Um, I think so. Oh, really? I think I did. There's just something weird about in the Django. beginning, and then like, the, it was too racist for me. <laughs> I was like, hey, this is like intense. Oh, I see. And that upside down naked scene with uh, Jamie Fox. Uh huh. <laughs> I was like, okay. But again, that's also his. That's a style. No, no, totally. It's a totally. style. But, no, no, but I, uh, I'm, what I'm saying is like, again, changing history, right? Totally, totally, totally. But, but what I'm saying is like, I wonder if, if these, like for somebody who's more invested in the characters, like the, mm-hmm. would they play it over and over? Like if you're like, um, you know, Black Lives Matter, big right. fan, would you like play that over and over? It's like, like this is my, this is my jam, you know? Right. Uh, I don't know. I mean, you're going to have to ask them, I guess. Like, I watched Kill Bill over and over because of the martial arts aspects of it. You know, she, like, went training and stuff, and mm-hmm. she was, like, an assassin. Yeah. You know? I see. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Um, anything else? What did you hate about the movie? Uh, Nothing. I don't think I hated it. Oh, really? Oh, I, don't, I don't know. I really didn't have any gripes with it. I just... It's just, like, when you go to it, it's, like, it's like one of those, you know, it's... It's Quentin Tarantino. You know what you're getting into. <laughs> yeah, it's an it's another all the, all Quentin the Tarantino are epic. Actually positivities. It's, no, it's like yeah, it's another Quentin Tarantino epic. Or true. And then yeah. you just I just enjoy the whole thing. I don't know, whatever it is. <laughs> true. Yeah, that's true. It's like even the, it it's sort of like um there's this thing in J- Japanese, um in Japan there's this thing in Japan. It's mm-hmm. called Kaizen. And what it is, I think it's called Kaizen. Basically, um, they'll break a pot and then they'll put it back together with gold. Okay. And that adds value to it because the whole idea is like the imperfections are what make a piece beautiful. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like all of the imperfections in Quentin Tarantino's movies. Right. It's like we accept them as positives because 
it's a Quentin Tarantino movie. Mm-hmm. He's, it's like the Andy Warhol, you know? Yeah. He's the Andy Warhol of movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, true. Because, I mean, like, I mean, the first thing I thought was is long, right? Yeah. But, like, and I was like, oh, that's a negative. But then the fact that I was thinking about the characters, I'm like, oh, it did its job then. Mm-hmm. Because the length made me invest in the character. Right. Unknowingly. I didn't feel like, uh, even, even though you could tell, like, shots are long. But, like, the overall movie, I didn't feel bored in any way, actually. I was. I felt like it was long, though. I was like, damn, this is a long movie. I didn't feel yeah. that. I didn't feel really? that. Yeah. Like, I enjoyed those long shots. Like... I don't know. It's just uh... <laughs> there, there's, but that's his style. You know how like the the awkwardly long pause when he was going to see the guy. Uh, yeah, remember the guy that was in the house, and then he's like, it took forever just to, to get go see there? the guy. Whereas like other movies, they'll like but jump he was, in there, right? But he was, but he was trying to build, uh, like, build something up, like build something that would uh, something might happen. Like yeah, this yeah is, the whole he's teasing, time. he's teasing the audience here. He, you know, um, he said. Uh, he said this in an interview, and I thought this was really cool. He's like, as a film director, I'm actually a conductor for the audience. Mm. I make you laugh when I want you to laugh. Yeah. I make you stop laughing. Yeah. You know? Uh, very true. Right? And I was like, that's that's true, because like, he did do that in the movie. Like He built so much like suspense in that one scene, <laughs> and then like nothing happened. You're like, oh, okay. But maybe that's what he was doing uh, to us the whole time. He was like yeah. building on our suspense so that the final scene would be much more epic. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I think, yeah. I really like that Brad Pitt smoked the uh, cigarette with acid. I was like, that's cool. I forgot about that. When, and it's but like see, that's the what way they, they did it's it. It's those innocuous things. <laughs> yeah. You know what's funny? When he's like, it's so funny because I know Quentin Tarantino's movies because he did that in Hateful Eight. Yeah. So it's like when they're like, oh, I'm just going to put this over here. I was like, okay, that's going to come back. And that's going to be special. <laughs> oh, I thought it was going to be like, oh, he acts, he like Leo smokes it accidentally. No, but nothing no, no. like that. No, no, I was like, like, I was like, like that's going to like, it's going to No, of course it's going to come back. I mean, like a lot of the movies do that too, right? Like, when I mean, there's but he like overemphasizes it, you know, like that whole scene of like they talked about the cigarette dipped in acid, and you're like, yeah. so they're gonna have to do on. it. But but it's not like it's not like it's like you're overly doing it that you question is this gonna be important? Right, or not? right, right, right. You know what I mean? Because right. yeah. everything was like that. Yeah, you know. No, but like, I I just it's not like like I totally forgot about it as like the characters were right because it was like because it's like oh six years. Later, right? Six, six months later. Six like, months oh, later. Gone. Oh, like, like I didn't even think about the cigarette any, or the acid cigarette anymore. And yeah. then they're like explaining what happened to them in Italy or, right? And then, exactly, yeah. yeah. And but, like, but see, maybe that's his genius. But that's, a, yeah, that's right. what I'm trying. Yeah, like, like you, that's a good way to like, it I makes things seem so it. innocuous. That's what I'm saying. If you watch Hateful Eight, it's just like that. Like that whole cigarette scene is the first right. half of Hateful Eight. Okay. You're just like, why am I watching this randomness? <laughs> but then everything makes sense as of the second half. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I I really liked how the characters like you felt like like I was like I'd like to chill with that guy. Mm. You know, like you really got to know them and like I they felt real. Right. You know? Yeah. Leo's acting is, like, super... Like, he always acts like the same character, yes, but, like, his... That character is so superb, like, how crazy he always plays, you know? He always plays those, like, lunatic characters Yeah, now, yeah, yeah. But they're so good. I love that little girl. She's, like... Oh, that was a super, good scene. Like, yeah. That was a really good scene. Yeah. She was totally his foil, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, like... I, oh, yeah. It, it, I love that scene where it was, like... It was like the long take, and they were like they were filming the acting. Oh yes, and then all that of a sudden, was a, that was really cool. And yes, I was like, oh, yes. that was sick, yeah, because yeah, yeah. it was like it was like, why am I watching this long freaking take? It's, they're just practicing their lines, and then all of a sudden, it's just like I forgot the line, and you're like, what? Exactly. So you see that, like, see these sort of things, like that's something different, right? Like you're watching a movie of a film, like of you're watching a movie of, of a, a movie being made. Yeah, yeah, and then. And you're like, you're okay, in, okay, you're okay, in, yeah. you're no, you're basically in the director's seat, and yeah, then yeah, he's yeah. like, and oh, I messed up the lines, so can and you rewind like, oh, back? And then yeah. the the camera pans back that uh, yeah. the same way that sick, like uh, that that was really cool. That was really cool. Yeah, true. Yeah, true. These are the different, like, yeah, I guess. So, so that was really a maestro moment. How like, um, Quentin Tarantino was saying like, I will make you feel this at this moment. I'll make you feel this. Yeah, yeah. my job is as a director is to conduct the audience. Right. 
And I was like, true, because like you had me going, like, why am I watching this? It's like so long. He's not gonna mess up his lines. He practiced them. They well, messed up. You're like, damn. I knew that something would happen because of the trailer, but like. True, yeah. Because yeah. I remember the trailer. Right, right. Like, okay. But, but I didn't like, expect it from that scene because it was like, it was so spot on. Everything was spot on. Yeah. And then all of a sudden he just forgot. Right, like, right, 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 right. Yeah. That was a, yeah, I like that. And then again, you heavily invest in the character. Yeah. Because you're like, oh, I want to see you succeed. Mm. You know, and he does succeed in the end. I love how it's like once upon a time in Hollywood because it was like a fairy tale. Because like, like a happily ever after. Yeah, 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 you know what I mean. Like even naming it that, it's like it's a happily ever after. Because mm-hmm. the final scene was like, he got everything he wanted. He didn't die. Yeah, and he got his acting career resurrected. Yeah, potentially. And like what? And he was able to go to that house that the neighbor. And exactly, that's what I mean. To, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it ended off good. For, yeah, for the characters. Yeah. yeah, happily ever after. Yeah, hence once upon a with time. all the yeah with all the craziness at the end, but still ends happy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was really cool. I, I really like the final, like, kill scenes. I was like, damn, you're going off? But it's so satisfying to watch you go yes, off. Yes, yes. You know, because you hated those guys so much. You know, yeah. just like you hate the Nazis and he just, like, destroyed the Nazis. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a great, I think it's a great Quentin Tarantino movie. So. Yeah, totally. Which is so interesting because it's like, Quentin Tarantino paints it in, like, black and white, right? Like, Nazis are bad, mm-hmm. you know? humans are not bad but then like you heard their point of view like oh hollywood always teaches us about violence so we should kill the people that teach us about violence and i was like i understand it yeah 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 like yeah i, I get where you're going with it you're definitely high <laughs> maybe don't do that yeah but I, I get your logic you know right but like i was saying with the, the nazi thing it's like if you actually look into history it's like we took the nazis well, not we, USA, like, for the Space Force. You know, they took their best and brightest. Right, right. So it's like, again, history's not black and white. But I love the way Quentin Tarantino paints it in black and white because that way it's like you get a clear definition of good and evil mm-hmm. and you get satisfied at the end because you're like, evil lost. Yeah. Good one. Yeah. You know, that was his mastery. This is the way history should have been. Yeah, that's his mastery. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's technically how history is because... The Nazis did lose. Well, no, 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 yeah, I'm talking more specifically with this one. Oh, yeah, instead of them killing everyone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe that that is maybe that is it with Quentin Tarantino. He doesn't just bring you into a world that you feel like you're actually in, but he simplifies the world to make you feel better about life. Because mm. life's very complex. It's like shades of gray. There's no black and white. But Quentin Tarantino is a master at making things black and white. Right. To make us feel better about our lives. Yeah. You know. Mm. Interesting. Right? Like, think yeah, of it as yeah, like, yeah. you know, straight evil in this one. You're like, oh, you're evil. You should die. And then he kills them in a like, insane way. And you're like, good. You deserve that. <laughs> you know? Right. Whereas, like, if you watch Avengers, you're like, Thanos had a point. You know? You yeah, know, yeah. Like, it's kind of rooting for him. I mean, there's, there's, there is a path for both, right? You can there have. Is, yeah. But, but see, that, that's like, uh, you get ambivalence yeah. if you're. Um, if you have both, if mm-hmm. it's gray, you're like, I don't know which side I want to go on. Yeah. So it leaves you feeling like you're you're questioning everything. Yeah. Right? But then like with these kinds of movies, it's like so black and white that you're just like, get on you, Quentin. Yeah. You made us feel good. Mm. Yeah. Right. All right. Yeah. So final score. I'm sticking to the eight. Maybe I'll go at eight point five. Maybe. Ooh. Eight point five. Eight point five. Sure. I was gonna join you at the eight. Oh. But I'm enjoying it at 8.5. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 8.5. You're right. Like, <laughs> upon reflection, it was a really good movie. It's yeah. it's mastery. Yeah. Maybe I should watch, like, Hateful Eight again. Maybe it's, like, now that, like, I understand what he was doing, it's, mm-hmm. like, mastery. Yeah. You know? Maybe. So definitely I still have to watch it, so. Yeah, yeah, so maybe we'll check it out. Yeah. So definitely check out... Um, uh, once upon a time in Hollywood. It's not for everyone. I'm gonna say that. Like, if you yes. don't, it's I, that's why I say it's like an Andy Warhol painting. If you if you appreciate art, you will like the movie. Yeah. But if you're like looking for something specific, nobody puts just, a just, Warhol. Yeah. If you're looking for Hobbs and Shaw, what's that one? Hobbs and Shaw. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm gonna check out Hobbs and Shaw though. No, no, I'm saying like if you're gonna, if you're looking if for that's, the, uh, if that's the style you want, that's not what you're getting. If you're looking for a Walmart painting, head to Walmart. But if you want a true masterpiece, <laughs> you gotta go for the Warhol. Right. But not everyone likes a Warhol. No. Yeah. Or not everyone understands it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But that's why he's a true artist because art is not always understood. Yeah. But a true artist believes in their art and sticks to it no matter what. Mm. Yes. True. Cool. Hashtag woke. All right. Till next time. Uh, are we going to watch any? Are we doing anything this weekend? Or next weekend? I don't think so. There's no movie, right? No. No, so I guess... unless. I don't know. We'll see what the Hobbs and Shaw. But. Yeah. That's. Yeah. I don't know, know if I'll be watching that. So. Like, I'll be watching it just because my sister and dad are yeah. going. But, yeah. like. I don't think it's like really yeah, yeah, worthy yeah. of like yeah. a podcast topic, you mm-hmm. know. So uh, maybe we'll just do a scratch dialogue. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. But um, or we might even do some online sessions. True. That could be kind of cool too. Yeah. Well, we will do a podcast regardless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyways, until next time, go watch Kill Bill Volume One and Two. Mm-hmm. Or, or just all of his movies. Uh, some some of them are more Warhol than not right. like i feel like kill bill is like it's enough of a walmart painting yeah it's, it's you know what i mean it's yeah, like yeah. it's a warhol that you buy from walmart right but like some of his other movies are straight warhol and you're like mm, i don't know if i want to buy this piece yeah i mean yeah like uh, that uh, uh just a just a quick thing was like with the audience and how they were laughing like yeah. you could and like the some scenes he added in just for <laughs> Just like, cause what they do in movies to get the audience, like to play with the audience. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Directing. Like the like yeah. the Brad Pitt scene when he was fixing the antenna. He didn't have to be shirtless. Oh, that's so true. But he did it because I didn't even think about that. That's so true. Yeah, he took off his shirt and everyone's like, "Woo!" <laughs> yeah, that's the point. <laughs> See, hey, director, yeah. he's directing the audience. Right. I like that. Cool. Um, I wanted to say something. Oh, well, did you did you like Kill Bill Volume One and Two? Uh, uh, I I th- at the po- at that time I don't know I did enjoy them, but it uh, you gotta you gotta grow into the Warhols. Yeah, like but, I don't think I was that interested or into movies that way at that time. I don't. Yeah, you're like a super Warhol now. Like you're beyond Warhol. You're like <laughs> freaking after you're an abstract painting. After you know? studying a like, bit of film, yeah. After studying a bit of film, I guess the stuff you watch, I, I just like, can't even get into. Yeah, it's you like, will not. No, I'm just like no, nah, bro. This, uh, I'm all about them time. Oscar types. Now. Yeah, um, but I mean, I like I like both. I can do both. It's just. But do you do you remember uh, Kill Bill Volume One and Two enough to like say which one you like better? Uh no, because it's mixed mixed up in my head. Oh okay. Yeah. All right. Well, if you're listening and uh, you know what I'm talking about. Um, one was more Warhol than two. Okay. But now that I'm getting older, I like one better than two. Mm-hmm. Two was really good, but two is more of like a standard movie. Okay. You know? And yeah. I think that's why I really liked it in the beginning. But now, like, I see the artness. Because, like, he went into, like, anime in number one. Was that with the sword scene? Uh, uh, no, that was number two. That's number two. But uh, number one... Um, I don't remember... I can't remember the differences between the two. Or no. No, number one was the sword. Number two was the the training. Oh, okay. I think so. Yeah, yeah. Number one. I did like I number one. I think number one was when she went to Japan. Like, that's the one thing number I remember. Two. I can't remember. Pretty f- vividly, fondly? I don't know. Yeah. No, yeah. Number one was she goes to Japan because that was her master number one. Okay. Yeah. And then number two, because she used the sword... And then, like, oh, it's a Hattori Hanzo sword. Yeah, yeah, Number two is where her master was uh, Pai Mei, and that's how she got out of the, mm. the uh, being buried alive. Okay. But, yeah. So I liked in number one how he went to straight anime for the Japanese scene. That was sick. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go with number one was better now because I'm into Warhols. Right. But, yeah, <laughs> definitely check those out. All right. Just want to put that out there. Okay. Till next time, take it easy. Yes. Peace. Peace.